I do have a statement I need to read at the beginning of each meeting. Um, you've heard it before, some of you, but here we go. Um, as member of the Rochester Select Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to Addendum 6 to Executive Order 01-20 and Act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. In accordance with Act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously, that comes up a couple times, to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are a providing public access to the meeting by Zoom, by using Zoom for this remote meeting, all members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen, and if desired, participate in this meeting uh, by contacting the town clerk to request the invitation to the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing this meeting, including how to access the meeting using electronic means in our posted meeting agenda. Instructions have also been provided on our town website. So um, following that, our normal opening for a meeting uh, states that our meeting has been posted at three different sites around town and has been sent to interested parties, uh, email list that we have. And with that, I think that we can start the meeting. Um, the first thing on the agenda for this particular meeting is um, open discussion on the new town plan that we plan on voting on this evening, uh, or whether or not to adopt it. So anybody have any discussion on the town plan? I have a question. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, good. This is Deb. I don't even know where my microphone is on my computer. Um, so I is the latest draft of the town plan on which we you are voting. Is that the one that says December 2019? That's on on the um, website. Dan, can you help me out with that? Is this is that the final version that we looked at? You're okay. muted, Dan. Dan, turn your turn your, there you go. It should say December 3rd, 2019. Okay. Okay. So I well, I have a question, and maybe Dan can answer this. So I looked at that and I looked at the goals, and I did not see the goal that I was promised that would be included. I did not see that there. So I wondered whatever happened with that. Um Hello, Lolly. Hi. Hi, Lolly. Deb, did you tell him what goal that was? Oh, yeah. And I was yeah. I was told that it was included. What, what the last what meeting is? that I went to at the planning meeting, I went to and asked about that. Um, I thought that it was, Deb. Your comment was in the about the um, one of the goals in the, the overarching goals about yes. com about community health yes and um, in our response to comments we said that we would add something yes and you showed it to me right and unfortunately the copy I have right now is not a revised it's the copy I had at the December 3 um, Planning Commission hearing um, I'd have to go um, onto the town website and look at well, what. Yeah, I just did. I did look at on the website and um, it was not on there at the latest draft. It said final draft. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't go sooner to see it, but I kind of assumed mm. it would be there. Yes, it should have been in there. Um, we took all the comments from our hearing and, and looked at each one and addressed each one 
and developed a response to comments, which um, I don't think made it onto the um, this um, the website under the hearing documents. Uh, but we did add something um, to the overall goals, talking about the health. And I'm sorry, I don't have that right now. I, I could get on to the um, town website and, well, you, you're telling me it's not there. No, I just, I looked a yeah. little while yeah. ago today. So will it be included? I mean, even well, though it's not on, on that final draft, will is it already somewhere so that it will be included? Uh, it should be, Deb, and my worry is that we um, made several edits or, or um, changes to the to the document, and I am um, wondering if they made it into or, or the plan that got loaded up on the website has those latest um, additions. Dan, I have um, uh, Tori's uh, February 11th email saying that she had incorporated changes. Um, I'm having a lot of trouble doing everything on the same machine here. Yeah. Um, so what we're adopting, Sandy, is the one that you you are saying on February 11th? Yeah, Tori, uh, uh, Dan put together a list of the, um, we, we all talked about the recommendations that were made. And Dan put it together and sent it to Tori, and she incorporated it. And 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 it is this the draft that I'm looking at is dated February 2020. And that and that's the one that Two Rivers has also. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But that's not the one that's on the town website for this. I didn't see it for this hearing. I have the uh, final draft up from the town website. Can you give me a clue as what page I'd be looking at? Do you, what's the date on the front of that document? That. December 3rd. So that's not the right one. It should be the February 11th one. Right. right. That's final. the one, the final draft. So is the one that, that it, Pat, Patty, that you and Frank have to look at do you have a copy of the one that Dan's speaking about from February? We have the one that's on the website. So we, um, we don't have the right one up on the website right now. Julie, can you chime in on that at all? I I must have if it says the December third, then I must not have a February revision uploaded. There's one that says January 2019. Let's see what that one. <clears throat> that's that's 2019. Yeah, that's, that's the old plan report, and that's it. Um, That would be a year ago, a year and a half ago almost. Yeah, that's the one we did to um, to quickly get the the village designation re, re um, reapplied for. Right, and then there's a final draft, but it's the maps. Yeah, is the you know the website says it's the final draft, but this December third one is the um, planning commission public hearing draft. So we don't have the one with the, the change that Deb is talking about, asking about, is in the February um, edition, and it didn't get uploaded um, to the website. But your suggestion was one of the changes that was made, Deb. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And that's the one we're adopting tonight, is that correct? Yes, That's what we're adopting tonight. That's what yeah. you folks adopted in Two Rivers, also. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you do you have a copy of that, Dan? That you could send it to the town. I know it takes a bit. I have to get um, Norm Christensen to load it because it takes two parts because it's so big. I, I think it's that one, but I might be wrong. Yeah. Dan, um, I, ha I have it. I, I'll, I'll forward it to you. All right. I'm sure it's in my inbox somewhere, Sandy, but okay. if you... I know where it is in mine. Okay. Thank you.
So is there any more discussion or questions or answers? I got a whole bunch of answers. I just need questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, uh, the town plan is kind of a moving target as well. As soon as you get one uh, set in place, you start working on the next one. So if there are, <laughs> especially in these times, um, it's 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 going to be ready for revisions, you know, time and time again. Uh, you know, it seems like every year. Got yeah. It's every five years, I believe. They have to. It has yeah. to be readopted. So, you know, okay. if there is something that's left out in light of all the uh, the fast moving pace of our community, uh, it's probably something that we can work with. We have two more people coming in. Um, Joan is in and somebody that is 767-4453. So we'll have to see who that person is. Patty, it's Nancy. Hi. That's hi there. I already had you in there. Okay. You're Dune? I am because Dune is running late. He should be trying to as he hits town, but he was in the car and asked me to start the meeting for him, which this is my first time hosting a meeting. <laughs> You're doing great. Doing well. So am I correct, Patty, excuse me, that you guys have finished your discussion of the year and you're going to get ready to vote on this now, the town plan? Or If anybody else wants to chime in something, now would be the time. Okay. Um, I move that we accept the town plan as it has been designed in its final final version. And I think I should note that the date is February. The, uh, the cover just says February 2020. Okay, so we are definitely adopting the version that is referred to as February 2020 um, as the final document. I second that, Patty. Okay, all in favor? All right. And we have adopted a new town plan. And certainly let's all start taking notes for the next one. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Dan. I know that's a long process. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you all the, the, the planning board um, for putting all of this heart and soul into it. It's, it's a very long document. It's a lot, but it is the heartbeat of our town. So it is very important. And uh, the work that you do does not go unnoticed, certainly not by me. And uh, if anybody wants to get involved that's watching this in the next round, come on, step up to the plate. Okay. I think that ends the portion of the planning board special meeting. Um, so we are adjourning from that meeting and we can now go on to the regular select board meeting, which um, there are a few more people in here than there was before. There is a disclaimer that I said at the beginning of the last meeting. Um, does, does anyone want to hear that all over again? What it refers to is the fact that we're having this meeting by way of electronic means, but everyone has been invited and everyone with access to any electronic can participate in the meeting. And um, our regular um, opening statement for meetings is that we have posted the meeting in three places with the agenda, uh, sent out uh, the agenda to all interested parties by email. And uh, so we are so noted and duly warned. Um, now, for an agenda, I don't have an agenda in front of me. Uh, I, I got that here on my phone. Thank you so much, Rick. Um, we can, we should probably should uh, approve the prior meeting minutes. Yes. Um, April 13th and, and April 22nd, we had a, a closed meeting, a special meeting there to open the bids. And we should probably approve those, Patty. And um, uh, for the special meeting notes, um, that came, after so let's approve the meeting notes from the april 13th select board meeting i have read them i found one small typo everything's in order so i so move that we accept the meeting note um i accept the 
the what which which part did you change that there was a date that was uh there was an extra zero in there so the date read oh yeah i didn't see that yep oh, okay i second your your uh, motion there all in favor Aye. Right. so moved we have that and then we had the other meeting that was a special meeting um what we did was we opened bids for um, engineering of a new bridge on West Hill Road in West Rochester. And um, no particular decision was made. We just opened the bids publicly. And so um, I read the meeting notes on that and I, I moved to accept them. I second it. We and should also note though, Patty, that we did have an executive session in that time. We did. Um, we did have executive session for to discuss personnel and the work schedule for the guys, mm -hmm. the road crew. After the April 22nd meeting, you're saying? No, we, we had it during that meeting after we closed the opened the bids and then we went into executive session to discuss the okay. work work process for the town crew. That's what I meant. After the <clears> April <throat> yep. okay. that's what we did. Mm -hmm. We also have someone else that's just joined the meeting that their name is Samsung. I'm sure they're on their phone. So <laughs> Samsung, whoever you are, please identify <laughs> Okay, back to business. We are um, approving those minutes. I second that, Patty. All in favor? Aye. Okay, we accept the minutes of those meetings. Um, next on our agenda, would we be hearing from Joan? Yep, Joan's on the on the de uh, departmental reports. So Hi, Joan, Hi, can you can you hear me? Yep, a little, okay. little scratchy. Um, yeah, yeah, you sound very funky on the other side too. So uh, as long as you can understand what I'm saying, I don't have much of, in the way of an update. Uh, the only thing I do have is um, on the community garden, which was discussed at the last select board meeting. Uh, it took me a while to get in touch with the flood plain manager because um, one of the main questions about the viability of that idea was uh, whether we were going to be allowed to do anything in the floodplain there, um, and if so, if there would be if there were permits involved. And uh, the information so far that I got back from the state's floodplain manager uh, was a little sort of vague. So I have to track down some more information. But basically, he did say that community gardens are allowable and they may need a permit depending upon what activities would take place in the garden. For instance, fencing where we go up, which is probably something you want to do there. Um, if there was any fill involved. Yeah, if you wanted to do some composting there, wanted to add topsoil, anything of that nature, may, may need a permit. Um, uh, according to the floodplain manager, he said the, the land behind and to the north of the school is partially in the, what he calls the regulatory floodway, which is like the zone A under on the FEMA maps. And it's uh, mostly within what he called the flood fringe, and I'm not sure what that terminology means, so I have to look that up. Um, and so depending on where it's located, we'll have a better sense of what permits might be needed. So, but I thought would help at this point for us to be able to move the idea forward if we want to try and do it this year, would be is whomever is interested in sort of organizing the project um, should find a good location for where they would like to put it. And then I can get a GPS point for that and send it to the floodplain manager and ask him to sort of tell us, okay, this is where exactly and um, based on, and then the other part of it would be if the organizers uh, of the garden could give, give me some ideas and parameters of what they do there, what kind of activities might take place. Um, then I could um, you know, put them in front of the floodplain manager and uh, get a better idea of what we're gonna need in the way of permits. And I still have to track down, there's a different person who handles um, the water withdrawals. So I have a feeling probably would not be a permit 
needed for that because I don't think there's going to be that much water taken out. It would probably be, you know, just by buckets when people need to water. But I will track that down as well and find out just to make sure that's correct. So that's really all I have on the way of updates. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, next on the uh, departmental reports, I've got on the agenda is the library. I'm not sure anybody's here to speak up for that. I don't think we have anybody from the library with us today. There, and I don't think we have anyone from the highway department with us, do we? Um, just one thing on the library. The state has, has opened things up a little bit, and there are some work safe additions that the library needs to adhere to. I think probably, Vic, you might be able to speak to that. I don't know for sure, but I know it came through on the Vermont League of Cities and Towns recently, just the other day that that came up, along with farmers markets. Um, and another thing probably that we need to do is, is for all uh, the town employees, uh, they need to go through a training process by May 4th. So that's something that we need to really jump on. Yeah, it's one of the uh, additions to the uh, governor's uh, directives, um, number 11, I think it is, <laughs> in yeah. the series, that uh, it has some very specific uh, uh, parameters for uh, road work and uh, training that has to meet VOSHA requirements. Um, I don't have that in front of me, but uh, you should, if you don't have them, we can certainly get them to you. I, I think we're going to have to do that. I, I'm not sure if that includes all our employees as far as our office. Uh, I believe it does. Work. Do you know? I believe, I believe it does. Yeah. And you have, does? To, yeah. And, but you can have, you have to have a safety officer uh, who can serve um, all employees of the town that you don't have to have a separate one for the road crew and one for the office. So one person can serve for both. Okay. Right, and that, that includes everybody that is out working in the public, like 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 myself, the hardware folks. Um, you know, it, it's it's yeah. forty pages long, but it's a very easy read. You flip right through it, and there's lots of diagrams and things. And at the end, you print out your name, and you have. I think you just keep that with you. I don't think it goes anywhere. It is so. You've had your employees do the same thing, Pat it myself just to see what oh, it was like. Yep. It's, it's really um, a, a quick read. It sounds huge because it's 47 pages, but it, it's lots of, lots of diagrams and pictures and things. And oh, uh, cool. it's, yeah, it, it just says that, you know, I read, understand there's a certification at the end saying that you, you've read it. Um, Patty, um, my question. Um, so this, um, if I said that ta all town employees need to go through a training process by May 4th, regarding the work safe restrictions, and this is um, uh, related to reopening businesses in the state or reop related to, to what? I'm sorry, I wanna make sure, I know what it's about, but I'm trying to figure out how to say it correctly. Everybody that's back out in the workplace, except for uh, healthcare workers, because I, I think they get different training or something, but it, it, it did exempt uh, you know, hospital workers and things, but um, it, does, it does cover everybody. Um, like like yourself, Martha, would probably. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how when we'll go back to the office, but yeah, okay, I see what you mean. So relating to people being back out in the workplace, is that is that correct? Yes, I believe so. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, um, highway utilities. Um, under new business, it says adopt the town plan. Um, I believe that we just voted on adopting the town plan or we voted to accept the town plan. Is Dan yes, still? We, we did. So now we want to adopt the town plan. Is that correct? I, I think we just did. We, I we, we just accepted did the, the town plan as it was. And so we adopted it in that process. Okay. So and I think so, we're good on that, Pat. Um, the next thing that we do have on new business on our list is um, appointment for animal control. Um, I do believe that um, Jeff Brown is interested in taking the position of animal control. And uh, even though I've spoken to him briefly, 
and, and wet his appetite about it, um, I believe that he has had a conversation with June and is willing to accept the position. So I move that we appoint Jeff Brown as our animal control officer um, on to fill the vacant term, the vacant position that we have on, until its term is up. I and second that I motion there, Pat. Everyone in favor? Aye. Right. When is that term up at the next town meeting? Is that, would that be it or? But we will be right after the next town meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to walk back a little bit, does, I, I never saw Terry at all this, you know, last couple weeks. Is he all done with the water testing? Does anybody know? I did sign some endine oh. bill, but that doesn't mean that he's done. Um, so I do know it's at least still in process. Um, that I don't know. I sent in the first quarter results. So I don't know if that includes that. Well, I'll have to, I'll touch base with him to see if what he, how that's going and just to find out, have an update on it anyway. Uh, just to know what's going on there. And I, I haven't seen John to talk to him, but as far as I know, he's, he's doing what he can do and what he's supposed to be doing. So he's trying to keep his budget under control, which is good as far as I'm concerned anyway. Yeah, and his, list, his list of chores that he's allowed to do did expand this week. So um, they're, yeah, they're, they're duly working almost, almost as a normal pay. Plow and snow up by you today. <laughs> <laughs> Point three counties reported in Channel Three News in Rochester. Yep. Wow! Yeah, I was going to say Channel Three said something about seven over seven inches somewhere. I was thinking, where was that in Rochester? Top of Bethel Mountain, probably. I assumed, <laughs> I assumed it wasn't in the village. Thank goodness. Uh, I don't know. I haven't heard from anybody at the top of Brandon Gap. That probably had a good amount too. Okay, so um. Does anybody have anything else they want to bring to the table and discuss? Yes. Uh, yeah, this is Vic. I'd like to have a request on behalf of the pandemic task force of the emergency management committee. And? Should I go? Go for it. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> um, just, I have a like two minutes of introduction to this, so, and then happy to take questions. So, as your uh, emergency management director and incident commander, I'm leading a task force devoted to taking action to protect the community as best we can from the worst impacts of the pandemic. Part of our job is to look ahead for things that could become major problems due to the pandemic. We would like permission to use what was the constable's office space in the town office building to set up a new emergency food distribution center serving Rochester, Hancock, and Granville. This emergency food center would work in parallel with the Rochester food shelf, not to duplicate it, but supplementing their work to be able to rapidly respond unmet needs in the Tritone area for as long as necessary. And here's why. Rapid and massive unemployment locally and nationally is happening the likes of which have not been seen since the Great Depression. A White House economic advisor stated yesterday that they expect depression era unemployment this year. Two weeks ago, the Vermont Labor Commissioner said that unemployment in Vermont reached 20%, which is an increase from 2.4% a month ago and could rise to 30% um, as reported today. Things are pretty bad out there and nobody knows how long it will last. There are already indications of large scale food insecurity in Vermont related to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, I contacted the Vermont Food Bank, was told that they are gearing up for major increases in demand for an unknown length of time. Uh, I was on the State Emergency Operations Center conference call uh, Friday. We were briefed on the emergency di distribution of MREs, meals ready to eat. They gave out 43,000, 
43,000 in uh, Newport on Wednesday and 112,000 meals in Rutland on Friday. Uh, we were also told that some Vermont food shelves are running low con and conducting additional food drives to stock up. So we would like to do the planning preparation work now so that we could implement by June. That means clear out the space, clean it up, create an operational plan, recruit volunteers, figure out how to raise money, how best to get the word out to potential clients and many other tasks. Uh, you can't stand up uh, something like this overnight. So um, with that, I hope you will support this request and be happy to take any questions. Uh, Vic, I have a question. Julie. How, uh, how long are you, like, is this gonna be just a temporary thing or is this like a permanent food bank? Uh, <laughs> It's hard to say, Julie. I, we're thinking this summer and then see, you know, how long the pandemic effect on food uh, security lasts. Um, you know, um, it's just hard to tell. I wasn't thinking of it being forever, but, um, you know, we'll get into the summer, see what it looks like. And, you know, maybe we can uh, decommission it or scale it down or uh, move someplace else if need be. But uh, the idea here is to get something up quickly and uh, and then see what the need is as we get further into the summer. Um, Vic, excuse me. Um, I couldn't write nearly as fast as your statement went. And I was wondering if you have it written down, would you be willing to email that statement to me? Certainly. I will do that, Martha. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'd like to include it in the article. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Vic, I, got a, I got a question, a couple of things. Yep. Um, Julie, that space has kind of been promised to you partially. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, For we were hoping to use it for record storage. Is, is, is it a large portion that you need to use for records or is it a small avenue or, or is there space enough in the far? I haven't been down there since I graduated high school. I, I remember <laughs> what it You're used lucky. to look like, but I don't know what it looks like now. <laughs> I think that we, if we could, if we could organize it in some way, we might be able to share, you know, a small area to to uh, organize the 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 what's the what the problem is right now is there's a small small area where I have records and it's just we're outgrowing it. Hmm. So I'm I've got things piled in the middle of the floor right now until I can figure out what to do. Is is that in the back portion of the building, say underneath the? where we have the voting, is that where that is? Yeah. In that and little room there on the in the back? Right, and the window that's in there is just a single pane, so I'm worried that, you know, if it were to get damaged, those records are not safe where they're at right now. They, they would be damaged also? Well, we'll yeah. have to look into that. Um, yeah, I mean, it depends on what kind of records we're storing down there, too. There might be a privacy issue if you're sharing, you know, an open yeah. room with the public. There is, there is that little holding room down there. I thought maybe it would be a good spot for record storage. It has a door on it, and you can lock it. That belongs to the American Legion. No, I'm not, I'm not on that side. I'm talking about under the, uh, the current office space, not under the voting you know, conference room. The, the holding well, one of the one of the rooms there is the furnace room, and then the other room is already chocker block full of all of Julie's records. Uh, I'm not sure we're talking about the same space. Yeah. I think he's talking about the holding cell. Yeah. Oh, the, there's a I, small office. The jail? <laughs> there's a small uh, office off yeah. of off of the large office. It has a door. I'm guessing it's. What do you think, Vic? Maybe. Eight by ten, eight, 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 something like that. Eight by eight, eight by ten. Yeah, depending where the sink is. I think if you if you either had shelves in there or just pile stuff in there, it'd be a good storage area, be secure. Yeah, uh, people couldn't get in there, and uh, it, you know you could put a lot of documents in. There. Are, are you oh, folks that. thinking that you're going to need the whole space that's down there, or we what, don't? What's your, it, what's your it, thoughts? Don't know, on, Frank. Um, we haven't gotten in. Well, we got in and got a quick look. Uh, it looks like it certainly would be big enough, and you know, might well be more than what's needed. We just don't know yet. Yeah. We lay it out. How how did the food uh, the the food service go this weekend? Was that did they see an increase in that? They, you? you know, ironically, they did not. Uh, went over and and 
Lolly and I went over and talked with uh, Ruth and Kevin, and, and actually, uh, it was slower than it usually is, which is a little really? confounding. We don't know why, and they weren't sure why either. Um, uh, I got to thinking about that, and, and um, I was wondering if maybe some of it might be that people have are embarrassed to some degree, maybe for not for that. I don't. I don't know. I'm just yeah. speculating. I think. Well, we were over at uh, the Randolph Food Shelf last Tuesday, and they've also noticed that it's it was slower than they thought it would be. But they got uh, requests for people uh, to be to have food delivered to their home. People were just afraid of coming out of their house uh, to come to the food shelf in Randolph. And so Randolph, they have lots and lots of volunteers. They were able to gear up and make deliveries to people's homes. We are also kind of speculating that um, stimulus checks and unemployment things might have, you know, kind of come through in that time period between last month and this month in their records. Right, right. Now, are you thinking of, of having, is this going to be open to like Granville, Hancock, uh, maybe even Stockbridge. I don't, I don't think Stockbridge has anything like that either. Yeah. Um, well, Stock, Stockbridge is served by the Bethel uh, food shop. That's the where they're, one. their official service area. And ours has traditionally been the three towns, Rochester, Hancock, and Granville. And, and we've been talking with the select board chairs of both those towns and they're very interested. And this is going to be all through uh, what what are you looking at for town money or or are you looking that way or no uh, just looking for space and heat and electricity. <laughs> yeah, and then we would uh, fundraise to to buy the food and whatever other supplies or equipment uh, would be needed. So the emergency management committee would be doing the fundraising is that what you're saying. Well. Uh, we haven't figured out exactly how that would be sponsored. You know, it might just be sure. a group of interested volunteers um, uh -huh. to figure that. You know, how to how to frame that. It's okay. you know, the impetus is coming from the emergency management committee, but in terms of taking ownership of a fundraising drive, that kind of thing, we you know, I'm not sure how that would be sponsored exactly. Have you seen an increase in your uh, shopping network there? Home shopping network or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know. <laughs> have you have you had a lot more people? Uh, have you been doing a lot more shopping for people at Max? Uh, not, you know, it's been surprisingly slow. We had about eighteen people, I think, through last week. There are a couple more um, Friday and today, uh, and uh, that's been it. We've had a couple from Hancock and mostly from Rochester. A couple of people have repeated, they, they really appreciate it. And they're old, mostly older people. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're hopeful that uh, more people will choose to use this versus coming down to the store, particularly if they're older or if they've come in from out of town, you know, for their weekend house. Uh, but uh, that's, that's where we are right now. Hey Vic, a question about the um, Federated Church food shelf. Um, yeah. Could you not just, pile on to that or what's the yeah. reason you can't do that? Well, we've had several conversations uh, with uh, Kevin and Ruth. Uh, they have a system set up now uh, that works very well. Um, and uh, to, we asked them about expanding and uh, that's not something that they, um, uh, first of all, they, they didn't see the need and, and, uh, and that it was, uh, you know, it could be disruptive to their operation. Uh, you know, it's like <laughs> have somebody in, in, come in and, and uh, mess up your kitchen and your pantry uh, in your house. And when you've got it set up the way it works really well, uh, it could be disruptive to their uh, monthly operation. Uh, you know, that, that uh, so we did explore that and that was not uh, an option they wanted to pursue. Okay, thank you. Do you know if there's any requirements, like state requirements, for the actual space itself? Um, I'm it's, sure. It's, yeah. Well, there, if we if we are able to participate in the food bank program or the commodities program, which is is not known yet, there are certain sanitary requirements and training requirements that would have to be followed. Which, um, you know, what little of we know of them right now seem pretty common sense. We'd want to do anyway. You know, keep things 
keep the hot things hot and cold things cold. And I don't know if we have any hot things, but <laughs> keep cold things cold, keep things clean, uh, you know, uh, pest control. Uh, and of course, uh, in today's world with additional requirements for um, sanitation and masks and uh, you know, sanitizing surfaces, nobody would be allowed into the facility itself would be delivery at the curb, just like uh, the other food banks or food shelves are doing and other uh, retail places. Um, Vic, and I have a question. Um, I was just thinking, when I was thinking of food shelf, I was originally thinking of just non-perishables, but, but I believe the uh, church food shelf has a fridge and everything too. So would you be having like a refrigerator and all that? There is a refrigerator there. Like oh, a, there is one a in the size oh. refrigerator freezer. Yeah. You know, okay. And uh, you know, we might be able to pick up another one or two with something used uh, just, just for that purpose somewhere. Vic, do you know if um, fresh produce is um, able to be um, given away in this in, in COVID days? Uh, I would hope so. I don't, I don't know a reason not to, but that's something we can uh, check on. Uh, you know, it would be our, our wish that we could have um, arrangements with uh, some of the local farms, uh, either sign up for CSAs or take food that, uh, you know, maybe didn't get sold at the farmer's market or what have you. But it's our desire to have the farmers uh, work directly with us. And uh, we had one conversation with Kevin Doherty about uh, you know, helping out and uh, there are others we'll be contacting as well. Vic, this is Nancy. Um, I have a, just a little concern about the historical society corner that we have down there that we are working in there. And I think I heard you say that there are controls about who can go into these, into the place. Uh, I didn't say that, but there should be. <laughs> Which would mean us probably. Yeah. So, you know, we just work it out, whatever it needs to be. We're trying to, uh, we're just trying to get our records and things organized. Yeah. Nancy, how much space do you require down there at this time? We have one corner. Oh, yeah. Um, when you go into the room, it's on the right yeah. and down sort of to the left of the room to, um, facing the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah, we, have a, we have a window. <laughs> <laughs> a bay. <laughs> it's nice to have a window of okay. natural light. Window <laughs> and a couple of desks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I certainly uh, think that it's a it's probably a good idea down the road. I don't know if if we should uh, uh, put a time limit on to see how it goes. Maybe. Yeah. I. What do you think, Pat? I mean, I. My thoughts are, are basically, um, I would like to consider a, a stand beside a sister operation to our current food bank. Um, if we were to, uh, or our food shelf, if we were to have something like um, produce, you know, something that complements what, what the church also does, not just an overlay on what they do, not just mull them over, but, but stands beside it and complements them with what we provide um, in addition to what they provide rather than trying to provide the same thing twice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I, I hear what you're saying. I, the, the food shelf operates for one and a half hours a month on mm -hmm. Saturday mornings, once a month. And we're, we're talking about maybe one to two times a week. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a different schedule yeah, and again, it depends on what uh, what the need looks like. It could be that much. It may not need to be that much. But you know, I, I, uh, so uh, would, would you be, need to know. if you were to do this? Would you need uh, to move the other people that are in there at present, or what? Are you thinking the, that the space is adequate that's left there for what you need, or what? I think so. You know, it, it, we haven't really laid it out, but there's there's a lot of desks that could be used for surface to put things down on. And as I said, we wouldn't allow people to come into the facility to pick food. We would have volunteers pick it for them and put it in a bag or a box and hand it to them at the door. Uh, just for, that's what you have to do these days. And uh, so, you know, I, I saw the, the 
the boxes for the historical society were marked where Nancy had indicated. And, you know, I think between that and the, and the you know, storage for the, the uh, town clerk's uh, files, um, you know, I think we'd be uh, fine to, uh, you know, all share the space. I, it's I possible really, there could be a petition that goes up too. There is, Nancy? I think a petition could go up. Okay. I, I'd like to review the site, really. I, it's been so long, I can't picture what the heck is down there. Um, I think Julie can show you. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to review it. I mean, I'm all for it, really. I think it's a need that we got to fulfill. And, um, you know, it, it's just would be good thinking for emergencies. I'm not uh, opposed to it at all. I, I just wanna make sure we don't shorten the people that we have there already. Yep. Um, that would be my biggest fear, I think. Um, but I'm, I'm not opposed to doing this. I mean, even if we review it in six months or, or a year or whatever, to to set it up in case it does get really bad, it's, it's not a, it's not a foolhardy plan. It certainly is, uh, might be warranted. And, and then in a year, if it doesn't, you know, if it's something that's not being utilized very much, then we can review it, I think. Yeah, and I think we'd know certainly before a year's up too. Yeah. yeah. So is what you're planning to, what you're thinking, Frank, that you might, that you guys could vote to give it like provisional approval or something to see how it goes or? Well, that, that's what I'm kind of thinking about. I, I you know, I, I don't want to mix it all together because I think it could be a, a very, uh, well, it could be a worthy project. I mean, if we, if something really, um, you know, rears, if this thing really rears its head, it's, it would be um, in our valley. I mean, it would be certainly advantageous. And if people aren't able to get back to work as, as they have been in the past and, and the, uh, the financial strains on families gets worse. Uh, I th certainly think a, a good food venue is going to be uh, a plus, you know, for mm. everyone, really. I mean, it's, Vic, it's a yes, different is there a possibility time. of going back to um, uh, the church and talking further with them? Uh, <laughs> We've, we've I don't want to put you on the spot. That's <laughs> no, okay. I mean, we've had those conversations. I don't know if anything's different. I, I had a conversation with Kevin also, and, and um, he's, it's, uh, they have a limited budget, and I think that might be some of it, um, but they're pretty much set in the way they do things and the way they want to do things. So, gotcha. Yeah, and it's it's a it's a fine operation. I, I, Lolly and I have been there, and uh, Catherine Shankman and I went there one day a couple weeks ago. And you know, it's set up. It's very well organized. They follow all the sanitation rules. They know the people coming. Um, and I think one of their concerns, and it's a legitimate concern, was you know, here come additional people in who would have to move things around. And uh, you know, they made it's a pretty small space there. It's about eight feet by 24 in terms of uh, with a shelf and refrigerator area, um, which if we get into a, you know, a true <laughs> food emergency, it's not going to be nearly enough space, I don't think, to work from. So what do you think, Pat? <laughs> I, I think it, it, it's worthy of exploring further. So um, we would we would support the cause of doing some further investigation. So I, I don't want to slow your wheels down, um, but I don't want to give you the green lights right now. Um, we do have to know what is required of the space specifically. Um, and we do have to know what is required of the space that other people are already using. Sure. So, um, I, I think that there's even more uh, requirements like having a lead paint inspection, things like that. I'm, I'm not sure if, mm. if, if it's open to the public, what it does. I okay. mean, there was a suggestion about the old firehouse, but I don't think that space would be worthy of storing food. Um, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so th this is probably the 
space that we have. So I think that um, let let's let's take a look at it and we'll speak again in a couple of weeks. Great. And, okay. Uh, see what space requirements you have. What are the requirements of this? What you need to do to put that stuff in there? It's yeah. it's food. So yeah, and it's yeah. basement. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I wouldn't mind setting up a time to meet with you down there or something just to go through it. Sure. I mean, we can see. Would, would that be okay with you, Julie? And yeah, and, I'd and like to on that too. I think what's pretty clear when you go down there, Frank, is that <clears throat> it, it's kind of messy. <clears throat> like yeah. the historical boxes are, you know, if, if things were organized, I think it's pretty clear that there's a tremendous amount of space down there. But right now, there's all kinds of junk just kind of sitting around. So if yeah. it were cleaned out and organized, there, there's more space actually than would appear when you walk in there. It's a big room. It's a yeah, big room. I know. I spent some time in there. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of the good times either. <laughs> there's a garage attached to it as well. I, yeah. I don't know if space is good to anybody for anything, but... So, well, I, am I correct that what you're going to do is you're going to get together to look over this and then maybe at the next regular meeting, you'll make a definite decision or is that what you're saying or, or am I wrong? Well, I think they need to look forward to, to going forward because if they want to get this set up as soon as possible, but okay. I think we need to review the space a little bit to make sure that uh, there's space enough. And, and by the sounds there is, and I don't know why we don't use it if that's the case. If, as long as everybody else has room enough to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But I, I, I don't want to slow your process down because then that only, you know, leaves it for, you know, kicks the can down the road, so to speak. So then you put you in a bind if, it, if something does rear its head you don't have the facilities to work with, so. Well, if we could get in together this week, that would help move things along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, wherever the parties need to be to, to look the space over. Nancy, you want to get in there, of course, to look at the historical society files, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, I, I know pretty much what's there. Uh huh. And it's there primarily because we have no other space and it needs to be dry space. Mm hmm. I think when you get in there, you'll see that if things were compressed and organized a little better, there's room to accommodate all of this stuff. And the little office that's, that's not used at all, it's completely empty and it's got a door, is a really nice uh, uh, potential space. But I think if, if you can get in there and kind of wrap your head around the potential of the place, we were pretty excited about it. I, I think that there's room there to accommodate the other needs and, and take care of this problem, which, which can be a pretty severe problem coming at us. So. It's certainly worth looking at. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I agree with that. Um, so maybe uh, uh, I can't tomorrow, Vic, but I can meet with down there on Wednesday, maybe, if you want to go through it. Or, yes. or you, Rob, or somebody. For it, too. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, we can't gather too many people, but. Yeah, right. <laughs> you no, know, I mean, but. Uh, are you talking about daytime, Frank? Yeah, 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 daytime's fine. I mean, okay. any time that works for you works for me. Okay, how about uh, let's look at some other things. How about like one in the afternoon after lunch? Wednesday? Yeah. That works. Okay. Wednesday the 29th? Yeah. Yep. Molly, what time? One o'clock. One o'clock, good. Yeah, Julie, is that okay for you, Julie? Yeah, that works. Okay. And I'll get together with Julie and show her the historical things. She can represent us. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the consideration. Is there anything else from anybody else? Uh, hey, Julie, did you tape that webinar today? Did you, is that correct? Yeah, I did. Was that, did you listen to it at, during the day or? Uh, I listened, I listened to parts of it. Um, 
there were parts that really didn't pertain to us as it, as our town, but um, uh, most of most of what we're looking at for funding, I'm thinking we would just go with the bank. Okay, I I didn't attend myself, so I was wondering. I know you said you were going to tape it to see and uh, anything else. Um, Patty, did Dune say anything about an executive session or anything? It's on the agenda. I just don't know. No, it's was... always on the agenda. There's no, it, the, the categories there, but there's nothing in oh, okay. it. So, um, no, I, I'm surprised he's not here already. Um, but, um, I think we did okay without him and... I'd just like to know who Samsung is over here. <laughs> right down. It looks like Kinley. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and I did see Lois Bond uh, had dialed in. So um, uh, there, there is just one more thing, Patty. I, sure. We're going to have a Zoom meeting sometime next week with a group that that has been assembled for looking at the way we do our voting just in terms of the physical part of it, as far as, you know, I, I don't want to go into the fall if this COVID thing is still here um, and have everybody traipsing in and out of the town office. I'd be, we're just kind of looking at another way. We're thinking that, that I think that everybody's kind of thinking that mail-in ballots is the way to go, but not everybody's going to be able to do that. So we're going to have to come up with some kind of a physical presence for voting. And uh, so we're going to, I've assembled a group of people. There's, there's like six of us that's going to review it. And I'll be updating that as in the future, when we come up with something, it's, it shouldn't be anything too drastic. It's just so we can adhere to the physical distancing that we have to live with now with this uh, COVID thing. So I, uh, well, I'll be doing that and I will be updating the, the board eventually when, when we get something a little bit more. It's all going to be under state restrictions, I'm sure, but it's more or less, it's just a physical place to do it and how we uh, assemble to, to uh, tally the, the votes in the end, you know, so we can all adhere to the physical social distancing <laughs> stuff and, and make it all work out, so. And wh whatever location you do find has to have uh, internet connection. Okay. Because I will have to, I will have to be able to do uh, same day registration, and I also have to get on to the system. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, we'll have to see what we can do on that. If because I think the only, I think one of the only places we're going to be able to do it's in the gym where we can, uh, you know, social distance enough there and it's got an entrance and an egress. So we'll have to figure something out about that. Yeah. But that's just something we need to prepare for just in case, so. Yeah, as long as we keep Julie in the loop. Yep, we will. Okay, that said, I think we have a meeting. We are wrapping it up. Thank you everyone. And uh, we look forward to our next meeting, which would be Monday, May 11th at 6 p.m.